children of the world, parents of the world, this is for you. I'm Rowena. And I'm April. We are best friends and moms to five young athletes and sisters to Olympic champions. We have a mission to inspire our kids and your kids through the stories of champions. Who am I? I'm a champion. Who am I? I'm a champion. Who am I? I'm a champion. Welcome, champions. We are so excited to be with you here today. And what is so fun about this episode is we're doing a recap of our first, you know, couple months doing the episode. It's the end of the year. So we thought that it would be a great time for us to just kind of chat about the impact that this has had from things that we've heard from you guys and also talk about some of our favorite episodes and some of our best takeaways that we've learned that we're passing on to you guys, that these champs are passing on to you guys through us, I guess. <laughs> so we're super excited to be here with you today. I know. What, um, what do you think that was the most surprising thing for you after listening to so many champs share their secrets? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. I, I feel like what's, I guess it's like surprising and also not surprising is how almost all of them were never like the best at their sport growing up. They weren't like this, you know, phenom that everybody was like, oh, they're going to be at the top. They maybe even started a lot later than, you know, you would have kind of thought that they were going to start. And they just persisted like with grit and hard work. And I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I really think that was the most surprising thing for me too, because I think as parents of kids who have big dreams, it's so easy to get caught up in like, oh, they started too late. They're not really, you know, the shining star right now. Um, It's so easy to compare and look at even other, because there are phenoms out there who, I mean, Kai Lenny, he's one of our guys who was probably, he was pretty good as a kid. Um yeah, but, but even, even him, remember, yeah. he was like, I went all, I was doing all these surf comps and I wasn't doing very good. I wasn't the best. And I don't know. Like, I feel like even him. That's but true. Yeah. yeah. I, um, it's it so is encouraging. Get, caught up in it. Yeah. it is encouraging. I love it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's something that I, I see, you know, when Jet, Jet sits in the front seat with me and listens to the podcast while we're driving. And so often, just like a light bulb will go off in his head. And you can see it because, He's so cute. He like holds my hand when we drive and he'll like squeeze my hand or he'll look over to me and he'll be like, you know, so often in so many of the different episodes Mm -hmm. that hit home for him that I really I know that I couldn't I couldn't have taught him those things otherwise and I know that if it's impacting him this way that's impacting so many yeah others that's the thing like we can that was the whole dream in the beginning right we can regurgitate stuff and tell our kids but it's so impactful when it comes from someone that's not us and you know what else is surprising for me I thought that I would have to like kind of treat the podcast like I do homework with the kids at school it's kind of like oh you're not doing this till you're done your homework but I couldn't believe how easy it is because we drive so much. And I think every family these days drives so much. It's so easy to just put it in. And I'm not going to lie and say like, oh, they listen to the whole thing without one time getting bored. Um, They definitely like tune in and out. But now even my eight-year-old Thor is like, who are you interviewing today? I told him he asked me that today. Like he's excited. He looks forwards to the episodes. I'm like, I'm interviewing April today. And he's like, oh, cool. (laughs) (laughs) well it's really cute you know what I think so it's interesting because I think when I know when we started the podcast we were like let's do short episodes because the kids don't have that long of tension spans and you know I still feel like that would be ideal right but then you also get you find you get on you know in the interview with these champions and there's so much to ask them and there's so much for them to say and so much knowledge for them to give these 
you know, these up and coming champions that like you have to almost do it as long as we've been doing it. And like you said, my kids will do the same. Like after like, I don't know, like 20, 15, 20 minutes, they'll be like, can we listen to music now? Or can we listen to something else? But it's in those. But what's cool about it is I feel like you can just, you know, after they answer a question or whatever, you can just stop it and then replay it again the next time. So you can you don't have to like listen to it all the way through. And that's because our kids are younger because I have a lot of people that have reached out to me that have older kids and they'll listen to the whole thing like total it's a total age tension span thing but it's I'm so glad that we decided to just go with the long episode anyway because I'm finding a lot of parents love it too and they're like I love it yeah 100% I feel like for myself too it's almost like a it's a self-serving pursuit (laughs) as well we were like oh we need to do it for the kids but my life has I just get g'd up after every episode and I'm like yes we can do this you know whatever it is that we're going for um I, what about I your know. friend that told you that like brought tears to my eyes your friend Kirsten oh my gosh you guys um she's actually our friend. a mutual friend of, yeah. of ours and she is um an amazing human being and we were just talking one night and she was like I just have to tell you how much how much impact your podcast has had on me and so many people and it's literally really helps me get out of a funk is actually Grant Corgan's one that we did with Grant that she was specifically talking about but because of that one she it really got her to continue to listen to the podcast and it's gotten her to just really love all of the episodes and one thing I think that she Um, expressed that I hadn't even thought of is she said that she loves the podcast because it really is like um, it's not like one of those podcasts where you have to like be super focused and you know let's get it's time to get motivated and all that kind of stuff even though there is some aspects of that but she said it's just like it's really amazing to and uplifting to listen to but not having to be like so serious and I don't know I thought that was a great way to kind of explain it because I mean that's how I feel I feel like when we're when we're when we get to do these interviews it's so fun and fulfilling yeah just the stories learning through stories instead of some like anecdote or quote or you know um what's your favorite do you have can you actually pick a favorite episode? I was thinking about that today, like the ones that I've repeat watched. <laughs> I mean, after every single time I listen to one, I'm like, that was my favorite. Or even after every single time we do it, it's like, that was my favorite. And it's interest. It's an interesting thing the way we're doing our podcast because I think most podcasters don't necessarily listen to their podcast that they that they record after every one because you know, whatever they don't want to. I mean, I, I listen to Tim Ferriss. If you guys haven't, if you guys are in the podcasting like world and you haven't listened to Tim Ferriss's one about podcasting, I'm trying to find it for you. So, so I can just like reference it for you, but it's awesome. It's like super long. It's like, he talks about like, if you want to do a podcast, the number one reason to do it is literally to that you have to love what you're doing and you would do it regardless. And that's how we are. Like, we're just like, oh my gosh, this is, it's so amazing. But anyway, he talks about how he doesn't listen, re-listen to his podcast, but he does read the whole transcription because you can hear a lot of things that you might say, verbal tics and stuff like that. But anyway, we listen to our podcast because we, that's the whole thing. Like, let's record something that the kids can listen to with us. And so we have, we do, we listen to all of them. And it's interesting because I, we record the podcast and I'm like obsessed with the interview and I go home like right away. I'm like telling my kids all these things I learned. Then it comes out and we listen to it and like, I'm still like obsessed about it. And then I still would like listen to it again. And I I really don't know if I could pick one that I loved. I love our sisters, of course, their stories. I never get tired of them. They're just like the greatest (laughs) greatest women yeah. but I think the first episode we did with Billy Kemper that's still like high on my list Robbie Madison was absolutely surprising to me I feel mm-hmm. like I heard so much stuff that um like especially the way he visualizes and how hard he actually works at that like how much they put into that it's it made me realize like if you guys haven't listened to Robbie Madison's and Billy Kemper's go back and find them, but it made me realize, you know, people think, Oh, they're so talented and maybe some bit of luck, like for sure there's luck, but like they freaking do the boring work. I mean, visualizing, it's not that fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. 
um, I think that's the biggest thing I'd drill into my kids. It'd be like, see what they're doing? They're doing it. It works. The brain's the most powerful tool you have. I mean, it's it's it really is interesting because it, it really even portrays into all everyone's life, right? Like those daily habits that you develop and you can start as a young kid and how even like you're saying, like you could go and decide to watch a TV show for a half hour and relax, or you could be like, I'm going to do 30 minutes of visualization. And it's not like it's fun, but those habits that you develop are like so imperative to everything in life. And so it's just, it's amazing how you can see it start to like transpire into kids as they grow older Mm -hmm. and all these things. And It's amazing, like how if you can ingrain those as you're as a young child, young person, how much that will help you in the future. Like I know for me, that would have helped a ton. Yeah, (laughs) but it is. It's doing the hard. It's doing the hard. You know what I love hearing through all their stories, too? I love hearing um, just the things that their parents did that might have seemed inconsequential at the time. Like remember um, Carolyn Buchanan's interview and she talked about the champion screed that her dad gave to her and she put on the wall um and and memorized it um you know we say this over and over again how important your words are and they create your thoughts and your thoughts create your actions your actually you know on and on actions create your habits and i it actually listening to these athletes talk about their parents it's inspired april and i to uh dig a little deeper into that because I'm more convinced than ever, like, as you'll hear everyone say in the interviews, they didn't just do it on their own. Like, it takes a whole tribe, team. And, um, yeah, I, I love hearing those tips from the parents. I know, and it's it's so fun to start implementing them ourselves for our kids. And even it's the same thing how, like, for – the up and coming champions to be implementing these habits and how they can be really easy to do, but they can also be really easy not to do. It's the same with parenting. And I feel like that's one of the things I've loved a lot about our podcast too, is all of these like ideas I've gotten from these champions and telling us about, oh, my mom did this or my dad did this. And I'm like, oh yes, I'm totally going to do that. And how, and realizing how much it impacts them or how much it did impact them. Cause a lot of times, you know, we'll be doing things with our kids and I'll be like, is this making a difference? (laughs) Or like, should I continue doing this? Like, I'll just tell you. Um, so Mossy, my husband does a journaling exercise with our older son, Jet. And every day he has him do it. And since for those of you that um, follow me at all on social media, our house flooded about six months ago. So we have been without a house, without a home. We've had a house, we've had a roof over our head, but we've been without a home for like six months. And because of that, we've just gotten out of all of our daily routines. And it's not that's just an excuse because there's no reason it had to happen that way but it ha- but it did and so one of the things was the journaling the journaling went went away and um it's something that we feel really strongly about and so actually we were just just talking about this the other day like how are we going to be able to implement this back into our lives and so my husband's like I'm just going to do it with him every night we're going to journal together And it's really simple things, but it's um, just talking about what are you grateful for? You know, writing down one thing that you're grateful for, and it has to be, it can't be the same thing every day, you know, because you want to start looking for the small things to be grateful for. Because of course, we're grateful for our family and our health. And it's like, it's okay, you can still be grateful for those things and write those things. But you want to write down like something like, I got to go on a walk out in the sun today or you know I mean that's like something I'm grateful for that might not be a kid's thing but (laughs) you know something like that and um so because the more you're the more gratitude you have the more gratitude you will find throughout the day um another thing that he writes down is what did he do for somebody today like how did he help someone today and that's the same thing because if you don't have anything to write at the end of the day then you will make sure the next day that you're finding something to do for someone else you know even if it it might start out as like you open the door for your teacher or you know something like that but it'll start becoming a habit and that will start to be something you know if he's like oh I have to go journal with my dad tonight and write down that something I did for somebody I better do something for somebody today you know um he also writes down um, I should go look at that. There's five things. He also writes down, I think, what is something that you could have learned that you learned from today? Like basically something that went wrong that you learned from? Because we all know that 
failure is not failure unless you learn from something. So what is the one thing that didn't go your way today that you learned from? And I can, if, if you guys are interested, I can talk about that and we can, we can put those other things. But anyway, it's the same thing. It's like those little daily habits and us as parents making sure that we you know, it's hard. It's really hard. It's like pulling teeth sometimes, like sit down and write in your journal, sit down and write in your journal for five minutes every day. And it's like, sometimes it gets to the point where you're just like, I just want to give up asking because it's pulling so much teeth teeth to get them to do it. But then you hear these stories from these champions and we haven't heard something specific like that, but you know, stuff like that, that, you know, was hard for them to do on a daily basis or get their, you know, kid to do on a daily basis. And it made such an impact in the long run that you're like, okay, this is worth it. What I'm doing is working. Yeah. Uh, and you might not see it right away. I, um, If anyone's listening and you're feeling like a slacker because you don't do that yourself or you don't do that with your kids, this journaling, I don't either right now, but I just got inspired from you, April. How come you haven't told me you did this? <laughs> but that's what I love about this community. Like it's not about, it's about just giving ideas, tips from the, the people who have walked the path before, not just someone writing a self-help book or a book about success. Like these are people who we're hearing from all different kinds of personalities because the same thing is not going to work for everyone, but we're hearing mm-hmm. the stories. And I personally, like, I want to live, I want to learn from people who have done it. I want to learn from people who have walked through the fire um, and they can say, this is what I did. This is what I found. This might help you. I just feel like they're the absolute best teachers. And I feel like we are so lucky in this community to have the caliber of people that have been saying yes to that, to us, you know? And you know what I think is even really surprising too, is I think that when these athletes and you guys, we're going to have more than just athletes on the show, but so far they've been athletes. When these athletes are explaining these things to us, And especially because we're asking the question and they're explaining, sometimes it seems like maybe you agree or not. I don't know. I've noticed this, but a lot of times, don't you feel like they've, they're like, oh yeah, I do that. And I didn't even realize I did it. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, when I was a kid, I was doing these things and I didn't realize I did it. And so it's like, kind of like you're saying, like, yeah, they get to teach us these things that they didn't even realize it was something to teach somebody. They didn't even realize this was something that they could pass on to help another person. But it's like, oh, yeah, I do do that. And oh, yeah, that actually is what helps me a lot or has helped me a lot, you know? So I think that that's really cool, too. I mean, I'm just thinking of a specific story off the top of my head. But remember when Kai Lenny was like talking about his um, Lego bridge across the, you know, when he's underwater, like that's something that just like somehow came to him nobody taught him that it's something that helps him hold his breath long under the water and relax which is the most important thing when you're being held down and you know jet was listening to that he's like oh my gosh i'm gonna try that that's such a good idea but it's not like kai's like oh i'm gonna go tell all the kids to build lego bridges like because he's not because it's just something that he does and thought of it and yeah you know so it's like i feel like there's been a lot of stories like that that have been really cool Mm -hmm. i my kids i see them processing because, you know, they work on extreme tricks in biking or skateboarding and it can get really frustrating when you're just like, you just can't get it. Um, And I've noticed, like Lion said to me the other day, um, because he was working on a big trick like he didn't think he could do, and he's just like, one step at a time, just just like Robbie Madison said, you know, you just do the little things first and then you just build and build and build. And it's so fulfilling to watch them and them to realize like, yeah, you don't have to do the big thing first. You just start little and you just keep going and going and going and don't give up. Helps me in my life (laughs) too. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Let's talk about your, your epic children right now. The stuff they're doing is insane. (laughs) I just, um, yeah, I, I don't quite understand it. Um, but I do think it is, you know, and people ask me like, how are they doing this? But it is just, um, fun, right? We hear every single champion say (laughs) that the main thing is fun. So we feel lucky. They've just found things that they love to do and they're the ones dragging us and pulling us. And, um, I do feel like not feel, I know a hundred percent that their confidence has been built from just positive brainwashing. I want to call it through this podcast, through other things we do. And it, it's, it works. I know that's, you know, speaking of things that are inspiring that we get to do, like inspire each other and with this tribe mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff. I love your, um, your affirmation thing that you do with the kids. And I mean, maybe you want to talk about that really quick because I think a lot of people can. Ooh, you know what? 
run with we that. should do one for our listeners we should do an, an affirmation that they can listen to and play at home play at night play in the morning yeah let's do that because that's yeah, that is what it. I've been doing with with the kids for a while um and it's not like they don't like to do it they feel silly um but it it is speaking life like speak it before they're seeing it like speak over what they want speak over what their dreams speak over what they want their life to do and it's an easy thing to get them to do again in the car on the way to school and it might just take a couple of minutes but it's just things like I learn fast I'm the luckiest I love how you you basically affirm all the time that your kids are lucky because life does take love luck um yeah, it does I love <laughs> you know I everyone's watching out for me everyone wants to help me like imagine growing up as a kid believing that everyone wants to help you like how good does that feel like that no one's against you. Everyone wants to help you. And so those are some of the things that we say. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a script out and we're going to do one for this tribe so you can play along if you want yourself and see the changes in your life. Because um, my yes. kids now, like they hated it in the beginning, but now Thor's like, it's really working. I am lucky. <laughs> things do work out for me. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so cute. I just feel like... It, it is it's amazing like because we see it even in adults like we we do it ourselves and we teach it to you know Roe and I run a business and we teach this to a lot of people on our team and it really does work but imagine like when you're a kid how much more malleable your brain is and that because for for affirmations really to work it helps to believe what you're saying and as we get older, we start to have more <laughs> reasons to not believe things, you know, and so it makes it a little bit harder. But as a kid, you really, it really is amazing how they do believe what you tell them. And so, and it goes the both ways, you guys, that's, that's the hard part is that even a negative comment, negative things, they will start to believe that too. And they will start to, um, act in that way. And I'll tell you, um, kind of a, a little vulnerable story. Cause I think that it's something that is, will help a lot of people is that we were a couple years ago, we got, um, a parenting coach for, um, us to help deal with jet. If you guys have, have any issues with a kid ever, like I highly recommend a parenting coach. It was life-changing for us. Obviously finding a good one helps, but, um, she, you know, we were just having a hard time with him and he was, um, you know, just kind of the, I, I wouldn't say typical cause not all kids do this, but like, you know, just really rebelling and not listening and all the things. And so we just, yeah, we went and got help. And one of the first things that she asked us is, um, and it's funny me saying this because I do really believe in affirmations. Even then I believed in them and I knew about positive talk and all that. I didn't even catch myself doing this. Uh, but like sometimes when he would act really out of place, I would say, oh, you're so frustrating. Why are you so bad? Like, why do you do this? Like, what, you know, and I would say, I would literally say those words. I, I have a hard time saying it now that I know better and I have changed so much. Um, but you know, this was before I really got the help for it. And she just said, you know, the problem with kids is that they will, they will start to be who you say that they are being. So if you say, why are you so bad? They will start to believe that they are bad and then continue acting bad. And so she's like, literally all you have to do is change the tiniest part of your, the way you're talking to him. And when he's acting like that, saying something like, you are such a good kid. I don't understand why you're behaving like this right now. And it is insane you guys how fast that things change and the first time I will tell you the first time I said it he looked at me and he was like he like started crying and he was like what do you mean I'm a good kid and I was like you are you're such a good kid which is obviously what I believed I really did believe that I just was verbalizing it wrong and I said of course you're a good kid what do you mean he's like no I'm not I'm bad I'm like no you're not you make bad decisions sometimes but that doesn't mean you're bad and that changed so much for us so it just goes to show like let's see he was probably like seven at the time and it just goes to show like how how much our what we say to our kids can impact them and so the same thing like Roe is saying so why not that's why if you hear in our in our the start of our podcast we talk about brainwashing you guys <laughs> and um and I feel like we're a little bit talking to the parents right now more than the kids but I feel like we're getting an audience from all sorts of 
angles, so it doesn't really matter. But just imagine if from the very moment you're born, you are, you're told from everybody, like, you are amazing. You are lucky. You, everything works out for you, you know? You really will believe that, and that's what ends up really happening. Um, I had some random bot probably on Instagram make a comment when I posted about my little Thor doing his affirmations just to, like, inspire, you know, because I'm like, it's working for us. Maybe you want to try it. I don't know. Like this story that you said, and he was like, oh, that's how you – raise an arrogant human, I guess. And I'm like, and this guy had three kids. I went and stalked him. I'm like, what? I feel so sorry for your kids. Like who wouldn't want their kid to feel confident and feel good about themselves and feel like they are amazing. It just like blew my mind. I thought every parent wanted that for their kids. Um, but maybe it's just like a, a mindset. I think there's a little bit of an old way of thinking about things sometimes, you know, and I think that we're learning the more research and everything evolves. We're learning more and more about like what actually does work, what actually is good. So unfortunately, sometimes it takes a lot for somebody to realize that's sad. It is. I just thought of these um, words that I memorized when I was young. I think my mom fed them to me. Um, But it was this guy named George Bernard Shaw. He's, I think, an old philosopher or writer. And and they've stayed with me forever. It just goes to what that parenting coach was telling you. Treat a person the way that they are and that's the way they'll stay. Treat a person the way you want them to be and that is who they'll become. Boom. Wow. That's amazing. (laughs) Wise guy. My mom used to tell me, my mom used to tell us when we used to, because we used to fight all the time. I feel like that's why my kids fight now. It's my karma. But um, she said, she used to always say, two wrongs don't make it right. That was like <laughs> the thing my mom, oh, if you hit her back, that's gonna, that doesn't make it right. They don't cancel each other out. What? <laughs> you know, like when she, Julia punches me, if I punch her back, like yeah. that's not gonna yeah. make it okay. <laughs> so good. Now you just so have funny. boys. That's it's normal. Yeah, I think so. I don't maybe know. Maybe we should tell them. Maybe that's our problem, though, is we're like, oh. it's normal for our boys to fight. And yeah, we're like, maybe. boys actually don't fight. <laughs> it's mind-blowing, <laughs> isn't it? How much – maybe we have more control than we think. Um, I do. <laughs> you know who I really want to interview, though? I really want to interview Nikita Ducaro's mom. If you haven't listened to oh. Nikita's interview, the BMX yes. Olympic bronze medalist who overcame anxiety, I want to hear what her mom did. She sounds like – that yeah, was- would you guys like to hear from the moms? We would love to hear back some feedback from you because that's one thing that we have been contemplating would be fun is to start interviewing some of the moms. And I don't know if you younger champs would want to listen to that. Maybe you would, but I know that a lot of moms would. And so that could kind of expand the podcast a little, which would be cool too. Yeah. My favorite interview that I feel like if people have, well, whatever, let's just say top three, people haven't gone back or hasn't listened to it. Go listen to uh, Steve Caballero. Maybe I'm just really into skateboarding right now, but I just (laughs) loved his story. (laughs) And just wise tips for young people growing up. Yes, I know. I remember when we were listening to his um, gosh, what did he say? And jet, it just literally like, I think I told you, but maybe you forgot. It like was a light bulb went off in his head. What was something that he said? You I'll did tell me, but it. I can't remember now. We'll have to think about it because it was really good. Yeah. There's so many like that. I feel like every single episode, I mean, River, he's six. He loves it too. He definitely has. I think we need to get some golfers on there for him though. Then he'll really get hundred percent. Need to get some golfers and what else? Oh, he's really into jujitsu now. Actually, we are going to get some jujitsu, some fighters on here because we do have some connections with Heck that. So yes. that'll be fun. And you guys listening, if there's anyone that you really want to hear from, we will do our best to get them on. Um, it's crazy how just everything works in your favor when you uh, you got a good cause like this. I I, fig- I think we'll figure out a way. And if there's anyone you know that you're like. I could reach out to them and connect them with these guys. We'd love, we love connections. Um, Yes. You guys, let's get these champs knowledge into the, into the champs minds. You know what I'm (laughs) excited about? I'm excited for like in maybe 10 years when I just, I'm thinking about my kids, you know, they're, they're all in different developmental stages, but in 10 years, maybe Thor will be 18 and I might be like, Hey, go back and listen to this episode. I think you'll, find something in it, you know, and it'll be like, it's just this library of stories that we're building. I'm so pumped. I don't know if I've enjoyed something as much as this. Um, 
I don't know about you, April, but (laughs) I get high after every interview. (laughs) I know. I get so excited too. And it's so fun researching them too, just all the things. Yeah. Well, Well, you guys, thanks for joining us today. We're super happy for you to be part of our tribe and continue to spread the word, please, about this podcast to everybody that you know, because that's how this you know, is going to spread more and more. And the more we can spread it, the more likely we can continue going with it. So thank you so much for being here as as long as you have. And free free to message us and tell us what you're loving and what, and we'd love your feedback. And um, thank you. Just thank you. Yeah. We answer all of our Instagram messages and just reach out to us on I am a champion podcast on Instagram. And yeah, we just, we love you guys. So thank you. Thanks again. 